Good morning and welcome to all of you who have gathered here with us and to those who are with us by Zoom or other uh, electronic devices. We are here to celebrate the time when heaven touched earth and Jesus came to us as a baby. Jesus was born for the whole world and so we join our brothers and sisters around the globe telling the story of this joyful day. It's been told in different languages, even like in Honduras. Or this week, President Zelensky told Congress uh, that uh, President Zelensky, he's the president of Ukraine, said that we will celebrate Christmas in Ukraine. If we need to, we'll sell it uh, by candlelight, not because it's more romantic to, to celebrate by candlelight, but because we won't have electricity. So this story will be told in great cathedrals and in gatherings, large and small. So I'm thankful to be part of this congregation. Thursday evening, uh, Karen Nefsinger texted me and just said, I'm just checking on you to make sure you're okay in these frigid tents. And I responded, well, with power on, I'm keeping warm. Thanks for your care. Mid Friday morning, I realized I was cold and saw that the thermostat read 60 degrees. And at one time during the day, I prayed, Lord, restore, restore my furnace. Well, Dan Troyer and I helped the Lord to restore it. <laughs> he advised me to change the batteries in the thermostat and to see that there was a clean filter in the furnace. And I did that. But the furnace would come on and then shut off. And you know, sometimes the temperature would get up to 64 or then it would drop. So late afternoon, Dan came and cleaned out a part and the furnace has worked since then. So my Christmas music has been, has included the sound of a furnace working and that is sweet music. But if the furniture had quit working altogether, I knew I had neighbors up the street and family who would welcome me in for warmth and comfort. And I thank uh, Pastor Jessica, who was lead us in the sharing announcements and prayer this morning. You know, sometimes words uh, get lost between the microphone and my hearing aids, and I don't want to be embarrassed, so Jessica will take that part. Our Advent theme has been restoration. Uh, you will see there are no more patches on the quilt. It has been restored. And so is a Bible uh, memory verse on the screen? Oh please okay right on All right another translation for the hebrew word restore is to turn to or return the king james version says turn us again O god so restoration is about god turning to us and we turn to god let's read it together okay then we will not turn away from you Revive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Okay. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, on this holy Christmas morning, we thank you for coming to earth in the form of a baby, that through your life, death, and resurrection, we can be saved, we shall be saved. We now lift up our hearts and voices in song with those gathered around the world to honor you and to sing of the joy you bring to us. Amen. We're going to add one more song that's not in the bulletin, and you'll need your books for this one, so if you would open your purple Voices Together books to number 249, Angels We Have Heard on High. Two hundred forty-nine in Voices Together. We'll sing verses 1 and 3, and I invite you all to stand if you're able to do that. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly swinging through the night, and the 
mountains in reply, echoing their great delight. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Next ones will be on the uh, on the projection. Uh, first will be number two hundred and forty. If you wish to use your books, two hundred and forty. Joy to the world. We'll sing um, all four verses. Joy to the world! The Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every Prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and Sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. Far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. And wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. And number 247, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We'll sing all three verses. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful, O ye nations, rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adore. Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold Him come. Offspring of the virgin's womb, veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased with us in flesh to dwell. 
Light and love to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die, born to raise us from the earth, born to give us Come, little lambs, except you become as a little lamb, you can't enter into the sheepfold. I want to tell you some things about when I was very young, a little shepherd boy. And some of the things that happened to me there. I'm very old now and I've experienced a lot of different things, but I want to look at this wall that I built for my sheep. And it's not finished. I have another brick. It's a brick of angels. Because I want to tell you about the time when the angels came. I was a little shepherd boy, and I was keeping one of the four night watches over the sheep, listening carefully to just in case an intruder might come, a lion or a bear or who knows what, even a, a stranger to steal some sheep. So I built this wall. The wall is much like us. The things in the wall are like we are. We started at the bottom with the cornerstone that was rejected. We have healing and courage and now angels. I want to tell you about those angels. The most exciting thing that happened in my life were the angels. I was watching over the sheep and suddenly an angel appeared. I think the name was Gabriel. The angel came and said, Fear not. I later learned that the same angel came to Mary, to Joseph, maybe even Simeon and Elizabeth and so many angels. I heard tell that in the Bible there were 273 times that angels were mentioned. Well, that was a long time ago, but I'm here to tell you today how real that was because what the angel told me about Mary and the baby is the same thing that Mary said, which confirmed to me it was the same angel and it was true. The angel said that we shouldn't be afraid. The same thing was said to Mary, don't be afraid. And to Joseph, don't be afraid. I'm here to tell you that there are angels even with us this day. And I'll tell you too, don't be afraid. Mary had the baby. The baby was Jesus. Oh, our wall is not finished. And the true cornerstone is Jesus. Now, many people think that angels were just for the time way back when. I'm here to tell you those angels are for here today. I have experienced those angels even this week. Many times the angels will come in unexpected ways, just like they did to me, the shepherd boy. Very unexpected ways. And why did they come to a shepherd? Because if they came to the king, it might fall, the information might fall into the wrong hands and Jesus would have been killed. 
But he came to a shepherd boy, to a shepherd, because he knew that they would be moved and that they could take that information and spread it to all the world. And again, I tell you, that information comes to you about the angels. The angels come to us and we celebrate it each Christmas. And it's for us to go and tell the rest of the world. Ruach Ha Kadem, Kadesh. It's Hebrew for the Holy Spirit. I think many times today, the angels come to us either through another person's words, through the Holy Spirit, in ways we don't even know. And we can't, many times we can't even tell it was an angel until after the fact. Maybe a week later, we know we've been, we've seen or heard from an angel and how God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came at Pentecost, John's baptism, Jesus' baptism. Sometimes it's fire, wind, spiritual gifts. Sometimes it's power. Sometimes prophecy. Sometimes wisdom. And I was aware that many of the world's religions have words and stories about angels. God is seeking every little lamb. Let's pray. Lord, open our hearts that we might, as little children or as sheep, might come to you and receive from you the Holy Spirit and your gift of Jesus, that we can spread the word as the first angels came, that we might fear not, but go boldly into the world and tell everyone the good news. Amen. Okay, thank you, Amos. Uh, my father's name is Amos, so I listen to anyone, uh, what people say, you know, calling themselves Amos. Yeah. All right, the first verse of a French Christmas carol says, down the centuries, waiting years, he was pr promised by all the prophets. Down the centuries, waiting years, men have looked for this joyful day. And then the refrain, born is he, little child divine, joined this song to announce the day. And so down the generations, this story has come to us. Our many great, great, you know, grandparents cross the ocean with the Bible in their hand. And so that is how the word has been passed down to us today. Uh, maybe you can hear your mother or father reading this passage to, uh, to you and your siblings. So I'm going to ask you as a congregation to join together in telling this Christmas story from Luke 2. Um, in the Old Testament, I think the, they're in the temple court. Part of, some people would stand on one side of the court and some on the other side, and they would recite the Psalms to each other. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to share. I will not ask you to look at each other because it might be kind, then you have to be cross eyed, and I'm not sure if everyone can do that. I know Lori Graber said that she was going to memorize it, I'd, uh, but I, probably the rest of us don't have it quite memorized. So I will ask um, those on, what well, Kim Lipweller will say, uh, will read um, the, on the piano side of the church, will read verse one, the ones on the organ side will read verse two, and we'll read it back and forth to each other. Okay, okay. Luke 2, 1 to 20, okay. I think that starts with verse, uh, all right. Let's read it together. I mean, uh, the ones on uh, this side will read. Okay. Right. The birth of, all right, it starts with verse 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
and everyone went to their own town to register. Okay. Bethlehem, in the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Okay. Who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. There. The time came for the baby to be born. She, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. He is assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go down. And Joseph and the baby who were lying in the manger, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Jessica. Dear Lord, uh, we thank you for this word that again has come to us. And Lord, we just thank you for Pastor Jessica, that she has a message for us from you. Lord, just open our hearts, and may we hear your voice also. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas. It is truly a joy to be able to celebrate with you today. Um, quite honestly, last night, I wasn't even quite sure if I would be here with you this morning. Um, just to give you a little bit of an idea, I started out the past week with a cold that progressively got worse each day. Um, but thankfully, I'm doing better now. And that was good because on Thursday, um, I had to become the primary caregiver when two others in our family became ill. Um, and so all of this combined with the stress of, and anxiety of this winter storm that was coming um, made this week a little bit rough, especially when you have sick people in your house, you know, a, a storm that they're anticipating like that makes it a little bit more scary. So this brief meditation um, consists of just a few thoughts that I feel compelled to share about our celebration this morning. Because it is a day of celebration, no matter what our current experience. Today, we get to celebrate our God, our God who came to be with us. We celebrate that God came to be with us as a helpless baby, that his birth was announced to some of society's lowest people, and that he brings great joy for all people. We celebrate many different things in life, and we do that in many different ways. Sometimes when we are experiencing something um, that we spontaneously celebrate, though, we're not quite sure how to go about it, especially in a group of people. Someone wrote about this um, after being in a crowd of people 
watching a partial solar eclipse. The writer said, at the moment the moon was overlapping the sun, the crowd spontaneously burst into applause. And reflecting on this, he said, whom or what were we applauding? We tend to imagine when we applaud at a live performance that the applause is for the performers, that its purpose is to communicate our approval to them. But this applause suggested that, in some cases at least, communication is a secondary motive, that applause is first and foremost a way of responding to the elation of a moment. I like that, applause as a way of responding to elation. It's like the round of applause is a tiny collective celebration for the experience that a crowd of people shares together. Sometimes when we experience or witness something wonderful in a group, like I said, we're just not quite sure how, um, how to communicate our feelings about it. I thought of an example of this, if you were here last Sunday um, with us in worship. There was this moving, joyful, energizing music video um, of the little drummer boy that was shared at the end of the service. And when it ended, there was this uncertain moment among all of us. We really enjoyed hearing it and seeing um, this version of the song, but we didn't quite know how to express that. So one or two people were moved enough to clap in response. And then if I remember correctly, a few more joined in and it was like we all kind of breathed a sigh of relief that it was appropriate a way to respond to the song and worship God through that moment with applause. I know that sometimes we feel uncomfortable with applause in worship but I think it can be an appropriate way to respond. Maybe that's something um, to challenge you on. Maybe we can change our thinking around applause a, little bit, applause a little bit. Think of it less as praising a performance and more as responding to the Holy Spirit's movement through um, this shared experience. I think applauding that video of the little drummer boy last week was our collective response of praise and glory to God. Responding to the birth of Jesus, the newborn king, seems to be somewhat of a theme that runs through the scripture passage from Luke 2, which we all read together. How nice was that? After Jesus is born, Mary responds like a new mother. She gives attention and care to the baby. Angels respond with praise and glory to God. Shepherds respond by spreading the news and glorifying God as well. And there are many other responses if you continue reading through Luke 2. Um, but for our purposes right now, I just want to focus a bit on the angels. So Luke 2 verses 13 and 14 tells us of the angels' response to Jesus' birth. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The angels praised God and declared glory to God and peace on earth. Most of us, when we think of this, I think we think that the angels sang. Although, did you notice that the text actually doesn't say that? But it's the way that we kind of make sense of what it could have been like. Um, during the Christmas season, I often like to think of the Christmas songs that we're singing and relate them to the messages that I share. And so I wanted to do that with a song that we've already sang this morning, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And actually, as we go through um, this meditation, I will at different points say, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And if you could respond with glory to the newborn king, I'll try to cue you on it. That would be wonderful. Hopefully you paid attention to the words of this song um, because it really is a great song. And I'm not the only person who thinks that. Keith Getty, um, he's a modern hymn writer and he wrote a series of articles about Christmas carols in 2019. One of them was about Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And about this song, he says, the carol really does comprise a simple and engaging presentation of the gospel that makes it such a crucial part of our witness and declaration of God's plan of salvation at Christmas time. It's an invitation to anyone who will accept to see beyond the baby in a manger and accept the new life and hope 
that through Jesus we can experience every day. We can easily understand what he means. Um, we just have to briefly summarize the lyrics of the song. The first verse, listen, the angels say, glory to God, God in human flesh, a king born bringing peace on earth and reconciliation of humanity to God. In that first verse, there is the wonderful good news that fuels our Christmas celebrations, that God was born to live on this earth. And we are reminded that the celebration doesn't stop just today on Christmas. In Jesus' birth, we as sinners are given a way for reconciliation with God. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19 says, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. The path of restoration in our relationship with God has been established as Jesus would bear the sins of each person in his death. The story of a baby born is now part of our story. We can join the angels' joyful proclamation of Christ's birth and give glory to God. Hark, the herald angels sing. The second verse of the Christmas carol is this beautiful poetry um, with words that many of us probably don't often use in conversation. But it's not just poetry, it's the message. Essentially, the message of John chapter 1, verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Um, in our family at home, we've been trying to read through um, the Greatest Gift. It's a book that was written by Anne Voskamp, and it has daily readings um, to help you prepare for Christmas. The reading from a few, da few days ago did a good job of describing this um, verse from John 1, verse 14. It said, God chooses to be right with you. So God threw open the door of this world and entered as a baby. He came as a baby because he was done with the barriers. He disarmed himself so that you could take him in your arms. The birth of any baby is special and it brings us joy. But the birth of Jesus, God with us, is unending joy. Hark, the herald angels sing. And the gospel story is kind of brought together, pulled in, tied with a bow maybe in verse 3. Born that we no more may die, born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. This is the greatest gift we could receive. Greater than the gifts under the tree is the gift of new life with Jesus while we walk on this earth, an eternal life when our time on the earth is done. First Peter um, chapter 1, verse 3 says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And as the narrative from Luke continues on, the shepherds did just that. They praised God. Once they had heard all that the angels told them, they went to see the baby. And when they had seen him, it says they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds praised God and they shared it with all of those around them. They didn't, and maybe even they couldn't keep the story to themselves. They were so moved they couldn't hold it in. We have the opportunity to make this part of our story too. After seeing Jesus and experiencing Jesus at work in our lives, whatever that may look like, then we have the opportunity to also spread the word. Like the shepherds, we can share all that we have been taught about Jesus and all that each one of us has experienced. Hark, the herald angels sing. Would you pray with me? God, our Father, we give you thanks on this beautiful Christmas morning. 
Thank you for this time that we can be together and worship you. How special it is to worship you on the day that we remember the birth of your son, Jesus. We thank you for the story from Luke 2 and from other parts in the Bible where we read about Jesus' birth foretold and the courage and the faith that all the people had as they took part in the story. We thank you for your son, Jesus, for the gift of eternal life. Help us to share that with others today and throughout our, all of our days. And we bring glory and honor to you in Jesus' name. There'll be two songs for the hymn and response, and the first one will not be projected. It's number 243 in Voices Together, 243. So I invite you to turn to that one. And we'll sing uh, just verse one on this one. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bread a cattle stall, oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swiftly winging, angels singing, bells are ringing, tidings bringing. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Christ the babe is Lord of all. And go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy Shepherds fear and tremble when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation, that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. This next song is not typically what you think of as a Christmas song, but I think if you're thinking about angels and delivering good news, it makes perfect sense. And uh, I wanted to thank Jessica for using that scripture because that's what I'm going to be singing for the solo and not what's, what you see up there or what's in your hymnal. So expect that a little different. All right. Over my head I hear music in the air over my head. I 
hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. To us a child of hope is born. I hear music in the air. To us a son is given. I hear music in the air. Him shall the tribes of earth obey. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. His name shall be the Prince of Peace. I hear music in the air. Forevermore adored. I hear music in the air. The Wonderful, the Counselor. I hear music in the air. There must be a somewhere over my head. I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. His power increasing still shall spread. I hear music in the air. His reign no end shall know. I hear music in the air. Justice shall guard his throne above. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Thank you to those who led us in music this morning, and that includes Marcelo at the organ. I also want to thank all for who participated. Thank you, Jessica, for your message you know, about the angels, for Mark, what he has done, and for Jennifer and Lucia for lighting the, uh, the candles. For a benediction, I want to read um, from Isaiah. Isaiah, he both talked about the present and he understood that there was a future when the light would come. Isaiah 60, uh, verses 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Amen. Okay, before uh, we go, Marge Weaver has said that there is plenty of food that is being prepared for the meal down in the basement. And even if you didn't sign up, uh, you are welcome to stay. Go in peace. <laughs>